great shield tree. Let your children worship you, Father God. Let it be so beautiful what you're doing in our lives. The peace that surpasses understanding. They don't understand why we're in peace and where we're at. <coughs> they don't know why we raise our hands and clap for joy when we're in the situation we're in. Reveal yourself through us, Lord, through the situations, through the pains, through the disappointments, Father God, so that the world will see you in us. They will worship you, Lord, like you should be worshipped. Let the angels come and rest here, Lord. The fire of your Holy Spirit rest upon this place. Even right now, Father God, the demons of hell tremble because you step foot here. You step foot in our lives. Lord, we pray so much for our government, asking for them to have wisdom and knowledge on how to run this country and the fire department and the police department and every other department that is in government. And we too again ask that today. But what we demand today is that every unclean thing and every unclean thought and everything that comes against the word of God to leave our president's mind, to leave our politician's mind, to get out of those offices, to get out of those places. You don't belong there. Those places and those offices were ordained by the Heavenly Father, Jehovah. You have no right being there. And we command you to leave. We command everything and every unclean thing that comes against our Father and the Word of God to be cursed to the root to go back to the pit of hell. We will not stand for it any longer. We, as a church body, will not stand by and watch you destroy this place. We will stand up and say, in the name of Jesus, you won't have this generation. You won't have the young teenagers that are getting pregnant and getting on drugs and repeating the lifestyle of mom and dad. You won't have it. We claim the lives over everybody in this community, Lord. They're your children. You put us here like a stick, like a city on top of a hill so that they cannot deny that you work here. Devil, this ain't your community. This belongs to the Lord. This ain't your land. This belongs to the Lord. These are not your people. They belong to the Lord. And right now we stand in one accord and we, we claim every single life Every single passerby, every single neighbor, every single neighbor's family and, and cousin and uh, son and daughter, we claim them right now in the name of Jesus. We may never see them walk into this church, but we will see them on the, on the day when we all get to worship the Lord together. Lord, give us a spirit of boldness and courage. Some of the messages in you guys know are a little hard. Talk about correction and those things. And 
And you don't get a lot of hand claps and high fives on the way out when you have those kinds of messages. Sit in the camp, get it out. Good message, Pastor. And there's other messages where you just talk about blessings and God wants to bless you and your cup overflows and then everybody's your friend. Like, Pastor, you should come over and have dinner. Yeah, we like you. I like those ones too. But the last couple of weeks, not been that way. The last couple of weeks have been correction, adjusting. Lord, I feel like I'm in a chiropractor every time I go into your, into your word. It just busted me out. And what happens is that sometimes we get into that mode and then the enemy says, well, I got them so into asking for forgiveness you know, God, they, they came and God's asking, they're asking God for forgiveness but now what happens is that he tells you that that's all you can do you're such an evil person how can you even go to church at all don't raise your hands during worship after what you thought and said and blah 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 you remember <clears throat> sometimes you walk around like, yeah, I remember we never get the we never get it in our hearts to rejoice over the fact that we've been forgiven. Because it keeps bringing it back. And so today I'm going to talk to you for a few moments. The fight that never was. Now, this is a boxing term where they would get and old boxers, such as uh, J.W. and Ben, they have their boxers because of their generation. And I have my boxer in my generation. And my son, he's younger, and he has his boxer from his generation. And we will talk about who would have won if they would fight. Was it Muhammad Ali? Was it Mike Tyson? Was it? And we could talk about this. But in reality, this fight never happened, never will happen. There is a fight in your life that you may not be aware of, that'll never happen. There's a fight that you have no idea that both parties have said, mm, we're not. one of them said, ah, I'm, just, I'm not doing that. I don't know if some of you are aware of this, but because of the way I grew up, this happens a lot. We would have somebody on the street who just had a big mouth. I mean, they're just all the time, I'll do this and I'll blah, blah, blah. And until someone finally calls their bluff. And it was usually the quiet person on the group. The one that never said nothing. The one that never debated him. The one that never just let him and he do his thing. One day, he just has enough. That's it. Let's go. Come on. Now, the one that was mouthing off gets real quiet real quick. Oh, I don't know the problem with you. You don't know how many guys told me that when they had a problem with me 10 minutes before. I don't have no problem with you, Diego. We're cool. We're, I mean, we're friends. I don't even know. We should just... No, you know you've seen the last person I had a big talk with. Now you don't want to talk to me anymore. That's a fight that never happened. They realized that this person, this individual is a champion undefeated and they get quiet real quick. One last quick story so I can really prove my point. They played a joke on this one guy who was the black what I talked about. He's an amateur boxer and he would go around tell all his friends how he was this wonderful boxer and he could beat anybody up. He wanted to go into professionals and so they took him to a sparring thing. They set him up with the person named Oscar De La Hoya. Now Oscar De La Hoya is a champion world class fighter. So they put the headgear on him. The guy had no idea who it was. And they go, come on, come spar with this guy. I'm going to mess him up, blah, blah, blah. And he goes in there, and they're kind of jabbing at first. And, and Oscar De La Hoya is playing the role. And he's like getting hit. He's like, oh, oh. And finally, Oscar De La Hoya goes crazy. He's like, that's it. I'm going to get this guy. And rips off the helmet. And now the guy sees, oh, this is Oscar De La Hoya. And he starts freaking out. Oh, no, man, I'm not trying to fight you, no. And he's trying to get out of the ring. He's like, go get him, go get him. He's like, no, man, no, let me out of here. And he's trying to get out of the ring so bad. And finally, after a few minutes, they start laughing at him. 
Because it's a fight that never happened. Back to my point. There's a fight over your spirit, over your soul, over your life that never happened, and we don't know that, and so therefore we don't always rejoice in it. Let's go to our first scripture today, amen? 2 Kings chapter 7, starting in verse 1. And Elisha said, Hear the word of the Lord, thus saith the Lord. Tomorrow about this time a measure of fine flour will set will sell for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. The captain who was at hand, the king leaned, answered the man of God and said, If the Lord shall make windows of heaven, could this be? But Elijah said, You shall see it with your own eyes, but you shall not eat it. Now four men who were leopards were at the entrance of the city's gate. And they said to one another, Why do we sit here to die? If we say we will enter the city, then there's a famine in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit there, we will also die. So now come, let us go over to the armies of, of, Seir, of the Syrians. If they spare us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. So basically what they were saying was we die either way. Now I'm going to back up a little bit and tell you about leopards. Leopards were not allowed to go near anyone. They weren't even allowed in the Old Old Testament to go into the temple. They, 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 if they were a little bit leprosy, they said, nope, you can't come. You have to be full of leprosy in order for you to come to the priest and get some help. The spiritual meaning is that you had to understand that you were sinful. You couldn't just be a little bit you needed all of God. And so that's what God was trying to explain to you. So the leopards were not allowed to go near anyone on either side. Now you can imagine that becomes a problem because you're going to need food and supplies and all those things. If you can't go get them, how is this going to happen? So what they used to do was that they would meet at a certain place and relatives would come, drop off supplies there, and then leave. And then they would come up and get what they needed. And so they realized, like, we're going to die. There's none left for us. If we go over here, there's a famine, we die. If we go into the army, we die. Some of us reached that situation. Some of us said, some of us drug addicts, some of us gang members, some of us said, you know what, if I go in society, they don't want me. They don't want me. I messed up my life so bad. I'm so full of leprosy. I got that no one believes me, my integrity. No one believes I will tell the truth. I'm a thief. I'm a liar to them. I'm a drug addict to them. I can't go there. And I can't go over here because there's nothing for me there. The, the life that I used to have, there's no more joy in it. There's no more safety in it. There, there's a phantom there. There's no more. I can't keep continuing living this way any longer. So one way or the other, we've got to make a decision. So they arose, verse 5, they arose in twilight and went to Syria camp. But when they came to the edge of the camp, no man was there. Listen to that piece real quick. They went at twilight. You know what else happened at twilight? Jesus died on the cross. And when he did that, it says that the veil was torn. The ground shook. And we had a one-way access through him to God. You're going to love this. And it says, verse 6, because this is what happened. For the Lord had made Syria army hear a noise of chariots and horses and the noise of a great army. And they said to one another, The king of Israel has hired the Hittite and the Egyptian kings to come upon us. So the Syrians arose and fled in the twilight, and they left their tents, horses, donkeys, and even the camp, camp as it was, and they fled for their lives. Do you know that when Jesus died in twilight, that the ground shook and the enemy realized, uh-oh, uh-oh, 
Unless we just got to go. Uh, uh, spirit of love, you can say if you want, I got to go. Spirit of deceit, I got to go. Like Jesus just came and saved the world. He just died for everyone here, everyone in the past, and everyone that's about to come. His blood covers them all. I'm out. So they fled for their lives. They heard a sound. They heard a sound. Something's going on in the camp of Israel. We are now Israel. We're the church is now Israel. Now I want them, I want you to understand, even those listening by internet, I want you to understand something. Let's go to our next verse. It's beautiful. The enemy is not even in the camp anymore. Luke 15, 7 says this about you. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented more than over 99 and the nine just persons which needed no repentance. In other words, when you realize that you had leprosy and you couldn't go here and you couldn't go there and you went to God, you came to God in repentance, all of heaven rejoiced over you. Now, I'm a little bit more animated than some people. Some of you might rejoice like this. Oh, man. That was very nice. Very pleasant. I'm not that person. When my team scores, I'm like, rah, rah, the neighbors know if my team is winning. Rose Lake will hear me cry out if the Raiders ever win a game. <laughs> you will hear a mighty noise if that ever happens. We pray. But when you came to the Lord, there was a joy in heaven over you. So when they heard your name, when Gabriel or the angel or however they found out, and they said, Christina Rodriguez just gave her heart to the Lord. She is saved by the blood of the Lamb. And the angel started to scream. The noises started. The trumpets started to blow. The people started to dance. And said, yeah, I've been praying for that grand daughter. Oh, yeah, I've been doing this. And all of a sudden, the camp heard. The one that was against you heard and said, oh, no. Oh, no. We got to go. We got to let go of the finances. We got to let go of the healing. We got to let go of the remorse. We got to let go of the shame. We got to get out of here. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Because God has an army that's coming for us. And we're not going to stick around for it. It was the fight that never happened because the enemy said, no way. Rejoice. Rejoice that there was a fight that you never had to deal with. Rejoice that the camp is right there and you can walk in and get rid of shame and you can get right in there and get rid of all the past and all of this and say, that's not mine anymore. What's mine is in that camp. Romans 8, 16. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children... Then heirs, and heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, then we will also be glorified with him. I know, ladies and gentlemen, there's been some suffering in your life. I know, ladies and gentlemen, that there's been some disappointments. But you have to understand, when you suffer there, you get to be glorified with Christ. Because you're not just some bond servant. You're not just some person off the street. You're his child. You're a joint heir with Christ. So when you walk into your prayer life, when you walk out the street out of your house and the enemy tries to tell you, you're still this and you're still that, you say, oh, you must have not heard the sound. But go to the God that I serve and ask him about me. And maybe he'll explain to you the same as he explained to Job that I'm his kid. We get to rejoice, ladies and gentlemen. Galatians 4, 7. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And a son, then an heir 
of God through Christ. There is a rejoicing over you when you change the Lord that you should never lose. Never lose that. Let's finish our story. King 7, verse 8. And when the leopards came to the edge of the camp, they went into one tent and ate and drank. Hallelujah. They carried away silver and gold and clothing, and they went and hid them in the darkness. Then they entered another tent and carried that one away. And then verse 9, and they said to one another, they don't want, we're not doing right. This is the day of glad good news. We should, we should not be silent. Do not, do not speak up. If we wait until daylight, some punishment will come upon us. We're reporting it at once. So now, come, let us go and tell the king's household. Amen? We are the king's household, and I'm here to tell you. I've been redeemed. I've been blessed. I've been sanctified. I've been recovered. I've been all of these things. I've suffered much, and I've been, been blessed much. It's time for the church to say, hey, I got all kinds of good things that I'm into my prayer life. I got all kinds of good things when I worship. I'm going to go tell the rest of the kingdom. Don't be sad. Smile. Rejoice. But I'm going through this. There's no enemy in your camp, buddy. But I'm going through this. There's not even an enemy in your camp. Get your stuff. Go get what you need. Open your Bible. Get what you need. Go to the altar. Get what you need. Open your, open your, your music and play it on, blast it. Let the, let the, let the, the, the neighbors know. Oh, they're praising them again. She's out there in her garden, not even picking anything anymore because her song came on. And now she's like, Hallelujah, that song to me. Oh yes, the Lord has redeemed me. Hallelujah. She's making up her own songs. That's right. Rejoice. Same way heaven rejoiced when it heard your name. Same way rejoice. Listen to this. Let's go to our next, next slide. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. I like words. This rejoice word comes from the word joy. Joy means to be happy, blissful, uh, uh, euphoria. But the word re and it means that you've done it again. So like do. And then you put redo, means you did it already, now you gotta redo it. Amen? You guys follow along? So joy, the root word, it says rejoice. Why does the word of God say be joyful? And then sometimes it says rejoice. Because you should have already been happy about what you got. And he wants you to know that you were happy about when you came to the Lord the first time and found out you were forgiven. And then as you go through life and the enemy tries to come back and put that in your mind, he says, rejoice. In other words, go back to where you came from. You came to my altar. I forgave you of your sins. Get up to make me joyful. Woo! I love it. Yeah. I don't have to just be joyful. I get to be rejoyful because I keep remembering no matter what comes to me, I'm saved by the blood of the Lamb. And you can't fight that, enemy. Yeah. It doesn't matter what happens here. It doesn't matter the situation. It doesn't matter what the doctor says. I'm going to rejoice. That means every single day I get to say, in the name of Jesus, I've been redeemed. In the name of Jesus, I've been sanctified. In the name of Jesus, you might not think I have a reason to dance, but I do. And I'm going to dance for joy because the Lord has saved me, redeemed me by the grace of his loving son. Amen. It's time that the church gets excited. We talk too much, so look at the government, and look at this, and look at that. Rejoice! Why? Because I was saved then, and I'm saved today. Amen. Heaven had a party when they heard my name. I'm late for my own party. I'm tired of being here. They got steak and enchiladas up there. I'm trying to go. I'm going to rejoice when the enemy says no. I'm going to rejoice when the world says no. I'm going to rejoice when the doctor says I don't think so. I'm going to rejoice when the government says don't preach that. I'm going to rejoice when my kids look like they're not serving God. I'm going to rejoice when 
the music and I'm gonna rejoice. Thank you for watching today. Um, I feel that it's going to be a big blessing to you. And um, share it if it does. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.